Losing hope brings us to a situation where we uh, undergo pain in our lives. That pain leads to, if you are not addressing the pain then and there, it will lead you to suffering. And that suffering, if it is not directed properly, it will bring death to you. And if that not being addressed as per the word, many people take the path of committing suicide. Bahrain is a place now, if you see, from the beginning of the year, each and every month, mostly even every week, we can hear people are committing suicide. Why? They lost their hope and they cannot handle that feeling, the pain, and they suffer through that and they finally decide it's enough. I will take my life off so that I will suffer no more. Is that true? From being temporarily suffering, they jump into the eternal suffering. But God in his sovereign provision, he has always has kept something for us to come out from those situations. Today we are going to see what is the thing that God has kept for us. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, in another translation it says, restore, establish, strengthen, and settle you. This is the privilege of being his children. He says, after we have suffered a little, he himself will restore us and make us strong and firm and steadfast. How many of you believe this word? So suffering is for a while. Suffering is not for Ever. Suffering, it's for a while. But we need to address that suffering with the word of God. I get one name and thank you for that, brother. Turn with me to Job chapter 7 verse 6. He says, Job chapter 7, the suffering means it is Job that he has gone through more than anyone on the first face of the earth. Amen. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. I don't know any other translation have been given. How many of you know weaver's shuttle? For many it is, an, uh, I don't know that. I don't know that gadget. Yeah? To compare that, it is like, you know, how many of you are enjoying 5GB connection or 4G, 4G connection? Now it is coming 5G, I think, on that. Yeah? Am I correct, Pastor? Yes, it is coming. So, cloth workers thread, no. This is saying that it is faster than the 4G connection. And it is going like... And he says, my days are spent without hope. They go to bed without hope. They wake up without hope. 
They do their chores without hope. They eat without hope. They laugh without hope. How many of you are laughing without hope in your life? Father God is saying, somebody is here, always laughing, always trying to keep themselves or keep a mask in front of them to see other people to see that they are laughing. But God seeing the innermost heart of you, saying that there's no hope in you. You have lost your hope. And today, he is going to restore that hope back in you. Hallelujah. Hopelessness and despair is a state that take you to a place that you feel. Turn anywhere that you will feel anger. And you take out your anger in somebody else who don't deserve it. Somebody is laughing. When you lose hope, it's a chain reaction that is going to start in your life. You will lose control of yourself and you will direct your anger towards somebody who don't deserve it or without any meaning you will start, I will not say shouting, I will say barking. Yeah? How many of you have barked in your life? I have. <laughs> I have barked. Unnecessarily. When, when there is uh, something is bothering you or some, whatever you have hoped for is not happening, then you can see the reaction in the evening that you start barking. I'm taking every point that has happened to me and I know that has happened to you as well. Amen. The doubt, the embarrassment, and then the, uh, the heaviness of your heart causing us to be confronted in a place and there we become hopeless. And that leads to, to the place where we lose everything and they, we go down. How many of you know that uh, the title of the message today Only one raised his hand. I think he has watched it. I want you to put the title over there. In Our Graves. In Our Graves. You know what the grave means? What is it? Sorry? Dead bodies are being buried. But my sermon's title is In Our Graves. No hope. How many of you can talk from the grave? How many of you can breathe from your grave? How many of you can identify your own grave lying in there? Oh, it's my grave. So what is this title in our graves? In our hopelessness, in our situations, what we do is we lie in our graves. Like a dead body. Uh -huh. I'm speaking to somebody over here. Shame is also implied and that make you 
to sit in your own grave. How many of you have experienced that? Shame. Oh, what the other people will think about me. How can I face them? And what we do, we bury ourselves in our own graves. Calamity and devastation sometimes take us into the situation of our own graves. We do not know what to do and how to do and where to do and how to come out of that situation. Do we have a hope? Come on, church. Do we have a hope? Hope of glory we have, yes. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 11. Each verse that we are going to read. 37, 11. Ezekiel 37, 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Is this our situation now? Maybe. Verse 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, prophesy to the bones. Hallelujah. Amen. I will open your graves. If we go and open any grave, either it is going to stink, it's going to come out with ugly things or the unwanted things. But when God opens the graves, it will be beautiful. Amen. When Lazarus was put inside the grave, after four days, even his sister confessed, oh, it's going to stink. He called out and opened the grave. He came alive. And there is no stench of death in him. God is going to open your own graves where you are sitting right now. Thinking that there is no hope. But God says, I am going to open the graves that you are in. That you will come out beautifully. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you receive church this morning? Do you receive it this morning? I'm speaking to the person who said everything is lost. Everything has gone and it is dry. Only bones are left. There is no way. But God says, I will open the graves for you. And cause you to come out and set you in your own land, says the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 13. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Don't ever, ever say when you come out of the grave, thank you Lord, and turn away and walk away from the Lord. Don't ever. I'm warning somebody over here. Don't ever try to do that. It will lead you to the grave where you cannot come back again. 
be in the presence of God. So, in our graves, what we are going to do? Till God opens the grave. It's a big question. You may say, oh, I'm dead. I cannot open my mouth. Oh, I'm dead. I cannot move my hands. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 71, verse 14. Psalms 71, verse 14. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. I'm going to tell the church one thing. Praise him in your graves. Praise him more and more in your graves. Hallelujah. I was so thrilled to see what God wants his people to do. No matter saying that you are in a grave and you are dead and gone in your situation, your all hope is being cut off. But God says, stay there, praise me, and praise me more and more. Can I hear a hallelujah from the church? Amen. Your hallelujahs, you know how it should be? The gravestone should be boom. And that is the way that God wants you to praise him. Like never before. Like never before. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is able to open the graves looking at yourself, opening his, your mouth and praising him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus. David enjoyed that presence. David has gone through in his life the situation that he has gone through, like you know, he's put back in a grave. But when he praised more and more, he was set free and he was set high. The same God can do that in your life as well. Man. Psalms 119 verses 49 and 50. So in your grave, what do you do? Come on, church. Meditate the word of God. Remember the word. Remember his promises. The words that has given you the hope. Every promise in him is yes and amen. He has given you the promises of his word. In your grave, remember the promises that he has given. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Next time. Oh, everything is lost. Never say that. Hallelujah. Say to him, glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise him. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. In our hearts, we felt that the sentence of death, that means we carry the sentence of death in our hearts. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves. Don't trust in us, but trust in God who raises the dead. I'm going to tell a story to you. If I come and tell you, about a beauty of a place where I have never been, how do you feel that? I have never been to Pakistan, for example, I have never been to Ghana, I have never been to Kenya, or I have never been to any of Nigeria. But if I say, oh, Ghana is a beautiful place. You know the mountains. You can see the rivers, the waterfalls. And if you are from Ghana, what you will say? <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> 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 
What are you talking about? <laughs> Have you ever been to Ghana? I will say, no, but you know, I heard about it, you know. I, I, but if I have been to Ghana, I come back and say, I have seen this. I have seen this waterfall, and it is like this height, and it is beautiful. You'll say, yes. Yeah? Am I correct? Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Now, we are in a hopeless situation in our graves. If somebody says, I will come and open the grave, and if it is another person, will you believe that he can open the grave for you? We believe in a God who has opened the grave himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When he died on the cross, they put him down in the grave, and then they said, everything is over. On the third day, he rose again from the grave. The same one who is able to raise you up from your very own graves where you are right now. We believe in a God who has experienced and done it for himself, done it for others, is able to do it for you and me. Hallelujah. Turn to your left and right and say, God is going to open your grave. And you are going to come out victoriously. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Graves are being opened right now in the hope that we have in Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to Ezekiel 37 verses 14. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 14. I will put my spirit in you, says the Lord, and you shall live. Amen. Come on church. Are you receiving it this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. You are not going to be ever in your graves again. You are going to rise up victoriously in him. Because he who has gone into the grave, he is going to open your graves for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. And then you will know that I am the Lord who have spoken and I have performed it. Hallelujah. It is not mere words. It is a promise that has been fulfilled and it is going to be fulfilled in your lives. Hallelujah.